Ooh, we uh, nothing like a a video about yourself. <laughs> Ooh. Um, the last couple of days I've been thinking, um, and and one of the words I was thinking about was gratitude, and um, I thought I really need to see what the dictionary says about this, and. One of the, the definitions that really struck with me was the quality of being thankful, a readiness to show appreciation, and to return kindness. So it's kind of a two-way street. You appreciate and then return kindness. And the state of being grateful is akin to be, being in a state of thankfulness. And boy, um, there's a lot of people to thank. I, I'm really thankful for, uh, to the Sacramento Running Association um, for this recognition. I was really taken by surprise. Um, I'm just so humbled and honored. I, I can't even tell you. Um, there's a whole bunch of people I'd like to thank, but uh, the list is way too long for the few moments that, that I have. So I want to just recognize uh, some very important people that are here tonight. Um, first, I want to recognize my parents, Jim and Lila Gregg. They're sitting right over here. Um, Mom and Dad, I wouldn't be standing here tonight without your love and your support and your encouragement. Tomorrow is my mom's birthday, and she's turning 90. That's, that's pretty incredible, Mom. And uh, so I'm here to wish you happy birthday in front of all of these incredible people. And I may you enjoy many more birthdays, Mom. And thank you so much for being here. Um, the next person I, I want to acknowledge that is here tonight is my high school and my cross country coach. Chuck Sheely, and Chuck is sitting right over here with his wife, KG. <laughs> Chuck, you built a model at Ch program at Chico High School. It was an amazing, you had an amazing training program. We, we ran pretty fast. Um, but more than that, you held us accountable. You created a sense of team that made us better than what the statistics might have indicated. And whether you know it or not, you paid it forward to me. So much of what you taught us back in the <clears throat> 1970s is part of our program now at Davis High School. Thank you, Chuck, so much, and thank you for being here. I want to appreciate Sue Williams from UC Davis, who's here with her husband, Keith, tonight, and a Hall of Famer, I might add, as well. Sue, you took me on as a graduate student assistant in 1983, and I was able to coach with you through 1989. During that time, I came to clearly understand the UC Davis way, and it's a very special way. And the way is this, it's when you work hard in the classroom, when you work hard on the athletic field, and everybody takes care of each other, great things will happen. Sue, thank you very much. I want to appreciate uh, my coaching friends and colleagues from Davis High School are, who are here tonight. Tracy Bennett, Tim Groth, Spencer Elliott, Christine Bolas, Grant Carboni, and Drew Peterson. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, lastly, I want to thank my family for letting me embrace this whole coaching thing. You've given me unlimited and unconditional support for a very long time. Our two sons, Brendan and Bryce, are here. Thank you for letting me be your dad and be your coach. The same thanks go to our two daughters on the East Coast, Caitlin and Callie. To Kara Lee, my wife, there is no way I'd be here tonight without you. I love you very much. And then to everybody else in this room and, and out there, thanks for uh, encouraging me, sharing their training plans and coaching philosophies. Um, it's so great when we all share what we know together. Got a couple of other things that I want to say. Um, one of them is uh, something that I tell the kids at practice on some days. And I, I tell them to go out and run joyfully. And sometimes I get these weird looks like, uh, how can anybody run joyfully? <laughs> um, it's hard work. I'm sure that everyone here knows that running can indeed be very, very joyful. And uh, to me, it, it's a form of moving meditation. Our daughter, Caitlin, fully embraced that concept of running joyfully. She embraced it so much that she created a blog. Her blog's called Running Joyfully. 
and she's been running joyfully for many years, and I suspect will do so for the rest of her life. Tonight, I'm also wearing a bracelet that the girls, last fall, uh, the girls cross country state meet team, they made bracelets for us coaches and um, gave them to us at the state meet, and my bracelet says, run joyfully. <laughs> so to everyone here, keep running joyfully. Those have been important words for us. We've also been fond of uh, using metaphor in our program over the years. And um, so in my, my, my little shopping bag here, I, I brought some climbing rope, OK? Christine, thank you for laughing at me. Um, but it's been a really powerful symbol to our program, and I want to share that with you. Uh, climbing ropes keep climbers safe, just like we ask the kids to keep each other safe. Climbers take very good care of their ropes because the ropes must be in good condition to stop and save the climber if they take a fall. We tell the kids to take very good care of each other. Climbers need to trust their ropes to keep them safe. Can you imagine rappelling down a rock face on a rope that you didn't trust? When everyone on the team trusts each other, the team becomes more powerful. We've seen so many teams perform way above expectations because of how deeply each runner cared for and trusted their teammates. Lastly, a climbing rope is a product of many individual strands woven precisely and perfectly together. Each season, we do our best to help each individual runner become an important strand in the final product, which is our team. We give each runner a bracelet at the end of each season to remind them about the lessons from the climbing rope. It's amazing to me to see students who have long since graduated from Davis High School still wearing their bracelet, as am I and my son Bryce, and I saw Fiona wearing one as well this evening. At Cross Country Mountain Camp every year, we remind the runners how lucky we really are. We've got a roof over our heads, a closet full of clothes, a fridge full of food, and friends and family who love us. We ask the kids to take a short break during their long run on day three of camp. During that break, we ask them to appreciate being in the outdoors, appreciate the freedom of running, appreciate their friendships, and appreciate their good fortune. Then we ask them to shout out as loud as they can, we're the luckiest kids in the world. And let me tell you, there's nothing like standing alone high on the Pacific Crest Trail and hearing those words echo from distant parts of the trail and knowing that there are young runners cheering joyfully to the sky. There's a saying that might have originated elsewhere, but I read it in a book that many of you may have read called Running with the Buffaloes. It goes like this. If you're not enjoying the journey, you probably won't enjoy the destination. Well, for me, it's been an amazing journey, and I've enjoyed every bit of it. And this is an incredible destination. Thank you all again so much. I'd like to close with this. I'm the luckiest coach in the world. Thank you.